1965 VW Beetle Restoration Part 3. Here is my disclaimer. I'm not a professional body man, paint man, but I have owned uh, my own repair shop for the last 25 years and I worked for Ford before that for 10 years. So this is kind of doing things my way. Some people might agree, some people may not. I try to explain these videos in very simple terms so everyone can understand it. And like I've said in my videos before, if I can do it at age 71, you certainly can do it. I'm taking this restoration video pretty much in the same way that I did it day by day. So I kind of bounced around and did different things on different days. I hope you enjoy these videos. It's probably more than you'd ever want to know about restoring a Volkswagen. Well, I have the quarter panels welded in. Painting the rust inside the doors with POR 15. POR 15 comes with a cleaner that you use first and then a metal prep. They say that POR 15 is the best rust prevention. It's kind of like a ceramic sealer. Lots of little rust places to fix. Using a Harbor Freight angle grinder and a flap disc to smooth these wells. I'm so allergic I use this outside air, supplied air respirator. Another view of the quarter panels. I primed those welded areas inside the quarter panels as well. Here's another view. Sandblasted around the wells real good. There are two schools of thought on body filler. Some like to use the body filler directly over the bare metal. Some like to prime the metal first, then the body filler. I think the best choice is to prime with a good epoxy two-part primer and then use your body filler because that way you'll have any leftover rust covered with a epoxy primer. And another view of the primed quarter panel. Transaxle cleaned, primed, painted, and grease leaks fixed, new boots. And this shows that two-piece hard-to-find mount and the seal that seals the shift shaft to the body. Another view of that transaxle seal, and you can see how it's made to fit on that transaxle. It sure is nice to have this engine hoist from Harbor Freight to move this transaxle and other parts around. This hoist makes work a lot easier. Installing the transaxle and there will be a lot of paint touching up to do. This is a good photo of the uh, engine mount and the transaxle seal. You can see here how much my welding has improved. I'll do a few more spot wells before I grind this down. At 71, I don't see like I did when I was 40, so I've done the best I could. Two repair panels made and welded in on both doors. This is the reason for the small gap. So your weld will go all the way through. This is the way you want it. This is the back side of that door. Some of the bottom of the door was rusted away too, so I'm having to install a new metal layer. Another view of that. Once this 
metal is welded in, it'll be trimmed and ground down with a uh, grinder to make it where I want it. Here's a neat little trick. I used a small LED flashlight and some electrical brackets to uh, fix this light to my welder so I could see better. My floor pans were in real good shape, so I just used brush-on Rust-Oleum paint. Here's an angle grinder from Harbor Freight with a flat disc on it, a sanding disc. And this is my new metal cutoff saw. Works really good. Saves a lot of time and labor hacksawing. This gas tank is so shiny with a new paint that it's really hard to tell what it is. All the engine tin straightened, primed, and painted. When you photograph glossy black paint, it appears that there's defects, but there's no defects. Here's a neat trick. After you repair your heater boxes, after I've brazed them up, I used a hole saw to trim them down perfectly. I like to use an exhaust sealing paste that comes in a tube. This is a cheapo Harbor Freight sheet metal bending brake, and it just barely does handle this 20 gauge. On light gauge metal, you can use just two clamps to hold the bar in place on top of the sheet metal. But on the heavier 20 gauge, I was afraid it was going to break this little brake, but it did bend it. There were several small, what appeared to be plastic plugs leaking on this transaxle. These plugs had disintegrated over time, and I used small metal plugs that I saved from years of doing carburetor work to plug those holes up, like this plug shown here. And here I have one installed. You can see here where I've been a piece of 20 gauge using that cheap sheet metal brake. It worked. Here are more little cup type plugs that comes in carburetor kits that I've saved for years. And you can see the new plugs installed. I never knew about these plugs before. Usually they're so covered up with grease and paint you won't see them. Front transaxle mount installed and like I say this mount is hard to find. I ordered a mount for this three times locally and every time it came in with the wrong mount, a later model mount. Wolfsburg has the right mount for 1965. On the 65 there's a rubber sleeve that goes around this where it, uh, around this protrusion where it goes into the bracket. Here you see the transaxle to body seal and you see the new plugs in the transaxle. I had missing fender nuts and I had to weld in some new ones and grind it down. One hole in the dash where somebody evidently installed a switch at one time welded that up. Fender nut on the rear apron. This fender nut doesn't look that bad once it's all ground down. And another one welded in. I went over every fender nut with a tap to make sure the threads were good and clean. My heater boxes had several places it had to be brazed in. Like this. Brazing is really easy once you get the hang of it. And I had several broken fender bolts, too. Sometimes you can weld a nut on a broken bolt or stud, MIG weld it, and the heat will remove it. 
getting ready to weld a regular nut into the sheet metal. Restoring and fixing the cracks in this steering wheel was very labor intensive. I'd say it took about eight hours to restore this wheel. First you have to open up all these small cracks a little bit with the Dremel tool and a little burr. You widen those cracks so that the material you're using to fix those cracks will have more surface to bond to. This is what Chris Vallone, Classic VW's videos, recommended to fix steering wheels. He had restored one. You can see that crack has been opened up, cleaning it and making a better surface. The epoxy I used is available at Lowe's Hardware, for one. All the cracks opened up and cleaned, and you see there are many of them. And my Dremel tool. Using a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel will enable you to cut off things that you couldn't possibly reach with anything else. After you mix the two-part epoxy putty, use vinyl gloves and just work it in. You work that putty into the cracks and after it hardens it looks like a real mess but it works really good. When you have sanded the epoxy putty down smooth then you can use this red glazing putty for the final defects. Now I have uh, most of this done, the glazing putty and everything sanded down smooth. You can use your Dremel tool to remove a lot of this epoxy putty and then you want to do the final sanding by hand. And here you can see another view of the red putty that has been sanded down smooth. Little defects filled in. And this is the 3M putty. I don't think I've ever used anything made by 3M that wasn't really, really good. Now I have a full coat of primer on this wheel. A coat of primer is going to show up defects that you missed the first go round, and you'll have to putty and prime again. Just another view of the car with the panels welded in. This is the underside of the front hood, showing some splits. All these splits have to be welded in, because they'll continue to split if you don't. And there was a lot of old Bondo in this as well. The front of this hood, the nose of this hood, had a lot of brazing and a lot of dents. That brass will have to go, that'll have to be cut out. So here's a little piece I made. It has compound curve, which as you know means curves in both ways, so I had to make a piece to fit. Here's the old piece that had been brazed up. That had to go. And another view of that little piece I made to go in, to be welded in. And so I have it welded in. A good way to hold this in place before you weld it in is with a magnet on the back side. Now I'll work this down with a hammer and dolly so it's going to look better than it looks here. And this starts to look a lot better. Ready for a very thin coat of Evercoat body filler. And a thin coat of body filler, most of which will be sanded off. I took this wiper motor assembly apart to make sure the motor and brushes and everything were okay, and then I cleaned and painted and fixed it up. That little spring will be painted too, of course, just haven't done it here. New wiper shafts. 
There was a split through a hole on the underside of the front hood. That'll have to be welded. Like so. Making a trial fit of my new pedal assembly. Primed and painted the shifter. Painting the steering column, turn signal switch. I had to make a new locking screw for this turn signal hub. Now on small parts, I just use uh, spray can paint, usually Rust-Oleum. VHT is a great paint too. The chrome on my vent windows was not very good, scratched fairly bad in places. These vent window frames will have to be completely taken apart and sent off for re-chroming. You can see all the little pits and scratches. Another view. Here's the complete assembly before disassembly. Another view. Really deep scratches where someone has forced this vent window frame into the door. You have to treat chrome parts with care. And this radio faceplate needs to be re-chromed. I need to replace the shift rod bushing. Here's the shift shaft. My bushing was completely gone. Here's the new shift rod bushing and the ring that retains it. And here's a photo of the inside of the tunnel showing the bracket where the shift rod bushing goes. and the photo of the shift hole and the plate. You can restore a glove box by having it flocked. That's the term they use. I used paint, which worked out really good. This is Rust-Oleum spray can paint, very close to the original color. And here's another photo of it finished. Now I'm back to working on this wheel. Like I said, uh, if you watch Chris Vallone's classic VW videos on YouTube, he has some great restoration videos and he's been great as far as responding to my emails. Painting small parts like the coil and the bracket And I have the alternator and regulator all ready to bolt in. I use a buffing wheel on my grinder to polish up some of this old chrome. And you can buy these buffing wheels and buffing compound at Harbor Freight. Now this video is not an ad for Harbor Freight, but they have some good deals on tools. And I buffed up this horn ring. It looks real good. And I told you I'd be bouncing around on the work I was doing. Back to body work on this hood. And a coat of body filler on the quarter panels. I do my first rough sanding with a Bondo board with 40 grit. Then move into 80 grit. Sanding with a Bondo board in a cross pattern will show low spots, high spots. Painted shifter installed. Of course, the tube and bushings installed too. Front trunk cover plates painted.
Thanks for watching my videos. There are some excellent videos on YouTube. Donnie Smith for body work, for one. And like I said before, Chris Vallone, classic VWs. Chris has made a lot of really good videos to walk you through a lot of this. I do a lot of research before I do any projects.